referred to by theorists as the alien abduction movement, back during the years of the 1960s to the 1980s, alien abduction reports began to skyrocket as they seemed to be a narrative of both mainstream reports and popular alien encounters far more personal than the average UFO sightings of the years before. This has led many to wrongly assume that the sudden bursts of alien abduction reports were nothing more than attempts by desperate people to capture their 15 minutes of fame, when realistically these reports were far more legitimate than the major news sources were making them out to be. So today we'll be taking a step back to look at one of the first alien abduction encounters to have ever been reported, several years before the alien abduction movement and uncover the secret it has to offer. Working as a farmer back in October of 1957, Antonio Villas Boas would go on to be one of the first reported alien abduction encounters, with not only the overwhelming evidence to prove his claims, but also as one of the main reports that helped to develop further evidence for that of the alien hybrid theory. According to his abduction report, on the night of October the 15th, 1957, Antonio and his brother were working out in their fields when they began to notice a bright red light in the night sky. Originally, they believed the light to have been a form of aircraft, but then as time went on, they assumed that given its stationary position in the sky, it was more likely a star they never noticed before. They would finish a portion of the field that night with no further incident. On the night of October the 16th, 1957, Antonio was working in his fields without the help of his brother well after the sun had set. This was to avoid the scorching temperatures of the daytime. He was well equipped to work throughout the night, as he had done many times before, sitting on his tractor and ploughing the fields for the next few hours. Oddly enough, as Antonio was working, he then claimed to see the same bright red star he had witnessed on the previous night out in the distance. Although the bright red star was an anomaly, he wasn't too worried by it as he and his brother had seen the red light the previous night, to which it seemingly displayed no strange patterns other than having moved a few times before. Unfortunately however, Antonio was alone this night, without the aid of his brother and so the situation would not be the same as the previous day. He continued his work unsure of what he was seeing, keeping an eye on the strange red star seemingly unmoving across the sky, but appearing brighter and closer than the previous night. A few more moments passed before he began to notice that the red star was growing in size. Worried it could be a number of things, he quickly stopped working and looked over at the bright red light, trying to figure out what it could have been. He then began to realise that the bright red star wasn't growing in size, but that rather it was definitely some form of aircraft quickly approaching his position. It was not long before he could make out the shape of the craft, a roughly circular or egg-shaped aerial craft with a bright red light at the front, and a strange rotating tower protruding from the top, as the entire aircraft seemingly hovered without any visible mechanisms or propulsion. As the aircraft began to descend near the location of Antonio, it began to protrude three extended legs to support the craft as it landed in the nearby fields. After seeing the craft ascend, Antonio put his tractor into gear and tried to leave the area as fast as he could. After only a few seconds however, his tractor completely died, as all the lights in the tractor shut off and the engine suddenly stopped, believing the strange aircraft to have been responsible for the sudden shut off. Antonio quickly jumped from the tractor and began running on foot through the fields, away from the landed craft. As Antonio was running, falling in and out of the soft, recently ploughed field, he was quickly captured by a small, five foot tall humanoid creature, wearing grey overalls and a helmet. Though it's not specified whether or not the creature's helmet was that of a completely airtight system, or merely a protective gear worn on the head, Antonio does not specify that he was able to see the entirety of the humanoid's face that grabbed him. He only states that he noticed its eyes that were small and blue, and that as it spoke it made noises similar to that of a bark or a yelping sound. Shortly after the first humanoid seized Antonio, three more humanoids of similar description joined in and grabbed him, 
rapidly dragging him inside the aircraft as he fought to try and get away. Once dragged inside, the humanoid creatures then began to take Antonio's clothes off, as they began to cover him from head to toe in a gelatinous compound. After being completely covered by the gelatinous compound, Antonio then described an overwhelming feeling of calmness that prevented him from fighting back, leaving many to assume that this strange compound had some sort of effect on his body. As he entered this new docile state, the humanoid figures led him towards a large semicircular room through a tight doorway that had a number of mysterious red symbols written all over it. It was at this point when Antonio entered the room that the true nature of the humanoid figure became obvious. The figures began to take samples of blood from Antonio's chin, leaving a deep mark that would later prove as evidence of the encounter as the scar would last for over two years. These figures then led him into a third room where they pumped a large amount of gas into the chamber that made Antonio violently ill. As Antonio was gasping for breath believing he would soon be killed, he saw the main door in the chamber open with a naked female humanoid creature standing in front of him. The female humanoid creature was described by Antonio as being five foot tall, a height that was similar to the other beings he'd encountered. The female humanoid also seemed to possess large blue cat-like eyes that made her appear to be inhuman. Additional facial features included a small pointed chin. On her head she had long blonde hair and had visible hair on her underarm. Shortly after entering the chamber, the female humanoid then began to force acts on Antonio, making a number of animalistic groans that he claimed scared and disgusted him. When they were finished, Antonio described a feeling of terrible disgust. He then saw that the creature was rubbing her stomach and then pointed upwards. Following this experience, Antonio was then given back his clothes by the other humanoids, and was given a tour of the ship. While taking this tour, he attempted to steal a small clock light device to show proof of his encounter, but was quickly caught by the creatures and was immediately escorted off the ship. As the ship left, he quickly returned home to find that more than four hours had passed. One of the strange side effects he would soon begin experiencing. Following the alien encounter, Antonio began showing signs of extreme radiation sickness. Unaware of what was happening, with growing lesions, nausea, weakness, and terrible headaches. He quickly sought help from a journalist researching alien abductions and was examined by Dr. Fonts of the National School of Medicine of Brazil. Antonio had originally believed that he'd caught a form of extraterrestrial disease, but was informed that he was suffering from a sickness caused by a massive dose of radiation at one time. Written in the doctor's report is the following. Among Antonio's symptoms were pains throughout the body, nausea, headaches, loss of appetite, burning sensations in the eyes, lesions at the slightest of light bruising, which went on appearing for months looking like small reddish nodules, harder than the skin around them and painful when touched, each with a small central orifice, yielding a yellow thin waterous discharge. The skin surrounding the wounds presented a hypochromatic violet tinged area, such levels of radiation sickness would have been impossible to have been exposed to during this time in the 1950s, and would have required Antonio to have gotten a hit of direct dose of radiation equal to the amount that would later be experienced at the Chernobyl incident. Overwhelmingly proving advanced technologies have been within the vicinity of Antonio. However, despite this mountain of evidence that more than supports his claims of the strange event, Antonio would go on to be ridiculed by those around him and would face a number of mental health issues following the event. Antonio would later go on to become a respected lawyer, and even up until he passed away would claim that what he experienced was completely factual, and not at all a hoax. So what do you think of the abduction of Antonio Villas Boas? Be sure to leave your questions and answers in the comments section below and help us to grow this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.